Hey everybody, and welcome back to Free Friday. This is Jason Ritchie. Hit the subscribe button for hundreds of free lessons. And today, for a change, we're going to learn a song. Here it goes. Mo Better Blues by Terrence Blanchard. That's all there is to it. But you know me. <laughs> You've been hanging around here a while. We're not just going to do a song. I'm not just going to hand you something. I'm going to make you think about it, okay? So one of the mistakes that I've made as a teacher, though, over the last 12 years, is I kind of look at my students and I see where they're at. And I think to myself, is there anything going wrong <laughs> in common with all of them. So what's the one common denominator when a bunch of people around me <laughs> are seemingly messing up and I'm the teacher? It's probably my fault. So what I'm trying to say is we don't need to think too much. All right. So I'm going to talk to you about that. So here's the tab for the song. One more time. I like to hit that a little late. Like that. Okay. So, how do I make the song my own? So, this is sort of inspired in a couple of ways by one of my Patreon patrons, Mr. Jason O'Sullivan, okay, who doesn't agree with me on everything, and that's good. I don't, I don't, I'd have to be a boring conversation with somebody that agreed with me on everything. I would not enjoy that very much. But Jason O'Sullivan and I could have a cigar together. <laughs> For the very fact that he doesn't agree with me on everything, that would be a fun time. But let's talk about the two different kind of methods of approaching, you know, this song or any song. Besides just learning the head to the song, that's what we call the part at the beginning, the head. It's a jazz term. Blues people use it too. The part you play at the beginning before you take off and improvise and solo. So... There's a variety of ways to do that. So first, I could learn it by ear. I could learn the melody of the song or the head, and then I can just subtly change that melody. In other words, I don't have to know anything about the chords that are happening behind me or any types of scales that might work over the whole thing. I'm just gonna use my ear from what I already know about the head or the melody of the song. You know, like this song here. So that's how the first phrase goes, right? But if you listen to the way Terrence plays even the second phrase, it's a little different. So he just goes up to a four draw. And just to change that melody a little bit. This is the kind of thing you can do, is just find neighboring notes that work. And you might have to use some trial and error. Now, the first thing you can do is just go, okay, what are the notes in the song? Like, in other words, what holes and what bends am I using on my harmonica to play the song? Then go, okay, it's probably safe to use those same holes in different orders or to decorate using those holes and those bends in the same area of the song. And it might even be the case that every note in the song works over every chord. This song here is an example of just that. And there's many more. 
But there are a variety of players that don't know anything about music theory, don't know anything about chord structure, don't know anything about scales, that do a very good and competent job of not only playing the melody, which they had to figure out by ear, and it might have taken them a little longer, but also improvising. So they just take safe chances of notes that are right next door. So let's do that approach through the Terrence Blanchard song one more time. Here we go. So I'm gonna play the head and then I'm just gonna start changing it, okay? No music theory at all, just notes that are close to the same notes in the song. So I'm just playing it straight here. Just the way that Terrence did. Or as best I can. One more time. Now I'm going to mess with it. I did was just take holes that I was using in the song and play them at different times. Sometimes I tried to use the same holes that I was on at that particular time in the melody and then kind of pick different neighboring notes. <laughs> right? Just something like that. And then... Now, what if I tried to put in a note that wasn't in the song? Randomly, you pick. Four draw bend, really? Okay, let's try that. So, I don't really like that, right? <laughs> I didn't think it sounded good. Let's just, so that's what I'm doing. I'm using my ear. I'm not looking at the chords and the song, which I really want you guys. <laughs> okay, but I'm not looking at the chords and the song. I'm just going, okay, like what else would work? Now here's the thing. If I did know something about music, I could look at the chords and I could find a place where four drop bend worked really, really well without having to go through the trial and error of trying that note on every single chord and finding out if it works. But let's try another one. What about five draw? Ooh. Right, okay, cool. Another note came in there too, for blow. So that's notes part of the G major scale and the song is very major sounding, meaning it's pretty, it's very nice and pretty. So maybe that note would work and then, whoa, it did. Let's try it again. 
So there was a little note there that note is a seventh. It's not important that you know that, but it worked and it's right there on the harp. If I did know something about music, I would know that that's the Mixolydian scale or, or mode. And I could see that that would work really well over G or G7, and it would add a little blues to my playing. So anyway, you want to be sparing with these things, right? Because we want to stay, if you're going to play by ear, you got to be careful, right? Because you're not, you don't know all the chords. So you need to kind of stay close to home until you find on your own the notes that work. So that is method one. Let's do it again. So I'm gonna play the head once and then just improvise. And we're gonna use that five draw that I found that seemed to work. Here we go. Now I'll start improvising. up same melody cool so I now know that any note on the harmonica the only bend I'm using right now right now is a three double bend I could use a two draw double bend because that's the same as the five draw. Let's do that. Right, so that works too. So that's one approach to the song. The other way I could do it would be to actually learn the notes in each chord. The advantage of this is instead of having to depend upon the melody and go, okay, these notes work and I know they work because they're in the melody and I only have, I have one or two, right? And then I have to explore neighboring notes and go, okay, well that one, that one worked there, but it didn't work there, and I don't know why, so I'm just gonna do that every time the song is there. Instead of doing that, I could have three to four to five notes per chord, not including the other octave, so I have a bigger selection of notes by just learning the chords. If you'd like to know more about that, please check out my videos on arpeggiating, because these videos will give you the key to finding out everything that is basically suggested that you can play over each chord. And the fun thing is that every time the chord changes, you have new options of stuff that wouldn't work there before that now will work. And you can know even before you play it if it'll work if you know your arpeggios. So at this time here, I'm gonna play you guys a video that I did a long time ago of this very song, in which I tried to observe each chord and the notes that were in that chord. So sometimes I have certain notes that I feel are better to use at certain times in the song. In other words, each chord gives me a set of rules that I can either follow or break depending upon how crazy I'm feeling. 
So let's take a listen to this song from an earlier YouTube video, Mo Better Blues, where I'm attempting to basically observe each chord in the song in an arpeggiating fashion. It's a little loose. It's kind of a combination of what we were doing earlier and what we're going to do later with the scales. But the main focus is what chord am I Here on? Here we go. Hope it's as good as I remember. Method number three would be to find a scale that works over the entire song. Now, if you know how to arpeggiate and you know what notes are in every chord, you will be able to find a scale pretty easily that includes all of those notes. Now, it may not have all of the extra ones, but it'll be less notes, so it'll be a little easier to play without having to think so much on each individual right. chord. So here we're gonna go with the major pentatonic scale. Now I know this scale will work because I've learned the scale first. Second, I've learned the melody or the head to the song. And I know that all of the notes that are in the melody fit in the major pentatonic. In other words, there's not one note in this melody that isn't used in the major pentatonic scale or one note in the major pentatonic scale that isn't used in the melody of this song. So first I will start with that because it is absolutely the safest bet. So here we go with the melody slash the head. Straight as an arrow, straight as I can play it. Now I'm going to use my major pentatonic scale. I'm just going up and down it. Down. Top. 
pop octave. That is literally just going up and down the scale. Please check out my videos on the major pentatonic scale that are linked below. Bye, Kate. Bye. Pork chops. <laughs> yeah, so just that scale, it works. Why does it work? Because every note in the melody of this song is in that scale. Why is it important to learn scales? So that you can use your ear. You can hear a song and go, oh, I know what scale that's in. And that eliminates all the other notes. So all you're doing is getting your mind just a little involved so that you can begin to implement the process of elimination so that you don't have to figure out what notes are not in the song. You hear it and you go, oh yeah, major pentatonic all day. Let's do this again. So this time I'm not gonna play the head, just major pentatonic scale. Maybe I'll get a little tricky with it. This time I'll take it out of order. I'm still using just scale exercises, nothing creative. Get a little creative, a little country. your pentatonic scale. Now, okay, look, let's try another one. The Mixolydian mode. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, I already know this is gonna work because I can see that there's a G7 in the scale. I can also see that there's an A minor. So I know that if I play a C major scale over this whole thing, it's gonna work, okay? If you wanna know more about that, check out my videos on the modes linked below. The other thing is the head to this song is linked below. Here we go, Mixolydian, just up and down. Now you can hear how that one note is not in the melody, but let's just play with it. Beautiful, beautiful, right? So it's a lot of fun, okay? So the more we know about music, the more fun we can have. But sometimes when we're learning about music, we think too much. And it's important to remember to go back and just think, what is the melody of this song? So even there, when I was playing the Mixolydian, not so much the first time, but this, as when it sounded better the second time, right? It was because I was still thinking about that beautiful, gorgeous New Orleans 
Terrence Blanchard melody from that wonderful, wonderful Spike Lee movie, Mo Better Blues. That's why. So I just took what I knew from really all three of these things. That's the thing. In the end, we're not really arpeggiating. We're not really playing scales. We're not really just thinking about the melody. We're thinking about everything all at once. The only way to learn how to do that is to do one at a time really, really well. Listen guys, before I go, I'll tell you a little story. This same song here, you know, I worked really hard in that little example I played earlier. Really, really hard to observe some uh, of what every chord was doing and, you know, where can I put a blues scale? Where can I put a seven? Where can I put a flatted third? All that stuff. And I put it up on Facebook and I was really proud of myself. I put it up on Instagram and I put it up here on YouTube too. I was so proud of it and I put it up on every platform. And underneath that, some folks wrote in, hey, you know, Jay, I did that song too. And I didn't even bother Googling to see if any other harmonica players had done it. And I thought to myself, well, how are you gonna do that song? You don't, I know you and you don't know what every note in the chord is. And then I went and listened to it. And I was really surprised to hear <laughs> that maybe even some of their versions were better than mine. Maybe even that version where I just played the major pentatonic, right? Or the, when the version when I played the mixolydian at the end and just sort of observed. Maybe even those versions were better than when I was trying to arpeggiate everything. So that's probably because I'm not very good at arpeggiating these particular chords. Whereas on like a regular blues thing, it's no big deal. Or an, another song like that. So in the end, we really need to explore all the methods. We need to keep our mind open and we need to remember that we are right where we're supposed to be. So with that in mind, let me just say thank you all YouTube. Thank you, Patreon. And as my man Lee Mac says, it's going to be another great day. Why? Because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between a truth and a lie. So when you wake up in the morning, you might as well tell it something nice. All right. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for the credits. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Free Fridays right here on YouTube. Subscribe today. Click the subscribe button for hundreds of free harmonica lessons. If you like what I'm putting down and you'd like to support the cause, go the extra mile, be sure to visit my Patreon page. Patreon patrons, thank you very much. You're making these lessons an absolute priority in my life, no matter how busy I get. A free lesson happens every Friday. For as low as a dollar a month, that's 25 cents a lesson, you can become a Patreon patron. If you're doing a little better and you can donate more, that's great. Every time you become a Patreon patron, you're helping somebody else out there that doesn't have a credit card, that doesn't have a dollar a month, to continue to get free harmonica instruction and much, much more. Remember, we got product reviews here on this channel. We do videos on addiction and bipolar disorder. We got blues stories. We got performance videos and everything right here on Jason Ritchie's YouTube. Subscribe today. I'd like to thank Honer, harmonicas and i'd like to thank blue moon harmonicas making custom parts for any harmonica that you might have at home blue moon has got you the lone wolf blues company pedals amplifiers microphones you name it much more right here out of louisiana the lone wolf blues company is bringing you the best in customer service for almost any kind of amplified blues harmonica needs that you may have speaking of amplifiers Harp Gear Amplifiers, check them out. The very best, Harp Gear, right out of Ocala, Florida. I got a website, www.mooncat.org. Check me out on mooncat.org. I got tour dates happening all over the place. I'm going all over the country this year, playing tour dates with JJ Appleton, with Damon Fowler, with JP Soares, with my own band, with Joe Crown, all kinds of people. www.mooncat.org, t-shirts, lesson information, all of that. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. We do this every single Friday, and then every now and then I throw you some more stuff right here at Jason Rich's YouTube. A mooncat, love and appreciate all y'all. Thank you.